Good evening, friends. Back to paint for you again. We're going to paint uh, the last pair of shoes, number five. And uh, I showed you last time. I'll swing you around and show you. Uh, I have a frame that holds five five by seven panels. I showed you last time. And uh, I'm doing five pairs of shoes. Tonight we're doing this crazy pair that I think it's a little hard to see, but the back end of them is like a bright yellow, green <laughs> kind of color. So the platform in the front, they're pretty cool, aren't they? Like I said, I think they're probably from the 80s. So I've got them set up so I can see. I love seeing the heel, and I can even see the heel on the second one. Um, swing it down and show you. Those are the four pair we've got so far. Let me see if I can set the frame over it again. I got a cord kind of running across it there. And they're not set up correctly, but it gives you an idea. I'll have to position them just right. And they're not, some of them are not signed. And, um, and there may be a little tweaking involved yet. I'm not sure. I'm going to look at them very carefully again. And uh, so I think it's really fun. I just, I just love shoes. So. Again, that's the crazy pair we're going to work on tonight. Let me turn the light off and you can see that color a little bit better. See? Aren't they great? Okay. Before we get started, let me talk uh, about our giveaway because this will probably be the last time I paint before I do that. I'm thinking I may do that Friday. Um, people are still signing up for it, which is great. I'm trying to get a set up here back where you can see the panel. So what we'll do is uh, you have to comment. A couple videos ago I made a video about the giveaway and it's called It's Time for a Giveaway. So go back and watch that video and you can follow the instructions. It will tell you how to get signed up for the giveaway. I will show you the three paintings that I'm given a choice of. You can see I'm a little bit better here than you could on the original. These are all 5x7 original oil paintings. 5x7 is a standard size to frame. And I've, I've uh, even hit them with retouch varnish so they're ready to go. So that's, that's still life, which I might have painted here. I can't remember on, on the YouTube channel. It's another still life. And then I threw in a fun one because I have a lot of young followers from TikTok that may have made their way over here. I threw them the painting of the jar of peanut butter. That one's on a thicker panel. So it's still five by seven. So get signed up if you're not. Like I said, thinking Friday we may do that. Put all the names in a bowl and draw a name. And thank you if you've entered or if you've definitely subscribed to my channel lately. I appreciate all of you so much. All right, so I think we've got you set up pretty good in front of it. We're gonna use our view catcher I promise I'm going to buy a new one of these. You know, I just never think about it. I was just at the art store the other day. I mean, it still works. It's just ugly. It's it's loved, right? Well loved. So we set it for what to look like to me is approximate, um, approximately a five by seven. And we're going to look through that and try to sketch this pair of shoes on. Oops, I'm hanging up my cord here. All right, so we'll mix up a very dark dark, some transparent red oxide, and some ultramarine. And that's what we're going to sketch with. Dip into a little bit of my solvent-free liquid. I've been using that as of lately. All right, and let's look through here and kind of think about what we want here. Make some marks. They're pretty much going to fill it vertical. Like I said, it's a little bit challenging, you know. Um, it's, a, it's a tiny canvas, you know, for all this information, but... Uh, I got a daffodil bloomed out there. When I get another one, I'll be painting those. Springs are coming. Don't you love it? And they're, like I said, they're pretty much going to fill top to bottom. A 
and the, the challenge from painting, if you've never painted from life, and I mean the easy way to do this, the easy way, is to photograph this, paint it off your iPad, which I love painting from my iPad because you can zoom in or set your photo up. Nothing moves. I mean that is, let's face it, that's the simplest way to paint even a still life like this. I don't do that. I, uh, I, and again, every time I stick this up in front of my face, I try to put it back right where it was, but things move every time I move. So that's part of the challenge, and uh, I like working from life, so I deal with that. Okay, the toe of that shoe. Because again, every time you stick it up here, you know, it changes. All right, so. Let me thin this down a little more. And this will be um, kind of a value sketch. You know, we'll get all our darks in here before we start. Don't you think these shoes are fun? Once I get it on, we're um, get the sketch on so I like it. I'll be wiping out very carefully, especially this kind of this yellow part because I I don't want to dirty that up. If you live in the Cincinnati area, um, I'm in a show right now at the Cincinnati Women's Art Club at the Barn in Marymount. I only have one painting in there because I'm a summer member, but that show just opened um, Saturday, and it will be up most of the month of March. And I think they're trying to have someone sit the show pretty much every day, so it'll be open. A lot of good art. I, I helped hang it. So... Um, and the building's fantastic. I always say that the building's worth a trip down there. Just to, it's an old UDF barn. It's just fabulous. So I can just see that one heel sticking out of the other shoe. And that may not be, this toe may have to come over some. You just keep adjusting until you get what you want. Don't stress about it. I've said this over and over, but I find if I can get, you know, one thing in the right position, I can kind of work off of that for everything else. And of course, we've got a shadow coming over here. And I may pull this down a little bit. It kind of is in front of this shoe. And there's a shadow here from that one. I tried to get every pair in a different position because I thought that was fun. Bought all these. Yeah, all of them, I think. Yeah, at a thrift store near me here great place to look for props. God, I, I've slacked off a lot of years. I <laughs> joked about I was a prop addict. I bought so many props. I have a cabinet in the other room that's all props. And I have cleaned it out and gotten rid of some of them from time to time. But uh, oh, teapots. Man, I really got a thing about teapots. I've recently quit chairing the one group that I chaired for like 15 years, but I uh, 
I would take still lives in for the group frequently. And I can still do that. I'm welcomed anytime I want to go and I may show up with a still life before long. I th Even though the shoes are blue, because they're shiny, there's a reflection here from the tablecloth. So I'm blocking in, like I said, this is kind of a value sketch. It's not just my darkest darks, though it could be. Someone asked me if it was like a no tan, but sometimes I, that's what I explain. Sometimes I go further and I, I'll put in more than one, more than two values, you know. And then there's a little shadow from that heel, which is fun. sure my pr proportions feel right before we get going. And look at the distance from here to here. I mean, use any tools you got to help you. Negative space, you know, really helps you figure out where you need to be. Like, just if you wanted to sketch these in as a mass, I mean, if you look at this shape here, around the shoes, you can use that. You know, you could start out by just doing something in the approximate shape of the shoes and sketching within that. Sometimes that keeps you, that's another thing with working from life versus a photograph, is you can end up not where you intended to be, you know. But if, say, you were doing it three apples, if you give yourself a place that, where you want the apples to be, then you're going to sketch inside that spot. Where if, if you just take off, you could end up much larger, much smaller than you intended. So that can be helpful too. So I'm going to mark out, this is a scraper that I use by Catalyst. And I'm, I want to keep the area clean where this uh, bright kind of yellow color is. This is a bit more in shadow here, but I see it there. And of course there we got it. So what we're going to do, like I said again, this is lighter down here on the shoe. I need to put some. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with that um, yellow color. And you know, what does it look most like? It looks most like probably lemon yellow. So let's put some lemon out there. Let's start with that. That is my warmest yellow. No, it's not. <laughs> that is my coolest yellow. Okay. My warmest would be my cad yellow medium. And I think we will warm it up a little bit with some cad yellow medium. So we'll mix up the two yellows that we have here on, our, on my palette. And I'm going to put a little white in it. And we'll see if we need to add maybe a little blue to it. And this, this pair of shoes is definitely funkier and brighter than any of the others in the frame. So 
Hopefully it all looks good together. I'm going to put a little, um, I'm trying a little cobalt blue to pull it a little bit green. So let's get a brush, not too large, and we'll block in this yellow color that we see. Here it's catching a lot of light. And it's going to be hard to judge the color. I've got, you know, some orange on the background. but I'm not going to judge it too harshly yet and uh, I'm going to go with what I think is right. We can adjust it later. And I'm thinking about brush work like I, I do. I don't want to overwork it. That area back there is catching light. This part's yellow too, a little bit darker. Yeah, and it's just too soon for me to judge whether that, you know, everything is judged one thing against the other, and until everything's up there, it's really hard to judge. So I'm looking at it down here. You know, and you can do that. You can mix it up and stick it on your palette knife like that and hold it out to your to the shoes and look at it. That, see up there, I think it looks a bit different than it does here. But it looks right to me right here. So we're going with that for now. We can change it. All right, so let's mix up some different um, values of the blue. Down in here, like I said, it's, it's lighter. It's still blue, but I see, I see a lot of um, a bit of a mauve color down in here. Warmer. I actually am taking um, some ultramarine and some cobalt. I'm throwing them together. Put some white in there. It's a really pretty rich color. Again, I'm going for like three values. Some of this I'm going to pull aside and make lighter for that bottom area. And I even think I'm going to put a little bit of a lizard crimson in there because it looks warmer to me down there. I'll try to squint and see just how much lighter it is. And there are some highlights on these too, which is fun. And then I've got some that's I'm trying to do three values. That's a good way to start, is three values when you're trying to paint something in. And I say it over and over, but you can pull those values back and forth and uh, come up with something in between. But that's a good way to start. So let's go after uh, the lightest part of the shoe there that we see. And I think I'm going to clean my brush because I've got that yellow on there. So I don't, you know, I don't pull it green. All right, we'll get into our solvent and we'll get into that lighter color. All right, now let's look and see where we see it. It runs along there.
we're getting some of it over here but it's a little tiny bit darker so let's put a little tiny bit more crimson in that for those of you who are new I work in mostly a limited palette I work in water mixable oils which may be new to you but they're they're really just oils but they're water cleanup um, I use and this is what I would recommend to you too if you're new to painting or you're considering painting is to start with a limited palette start with a warm and cool of the three primaries in white and work with that as long as you can learn to mix color the toe of that like I said is a little lighter trying to squint and see we got quite the bright reflection right in there that area so we'll leave that open for that I'm going to intermix the those two blues Got a highlight there too. I want to get. not to overthink this we're just trying to block in what I see I'm feeling as though this opening needs to come down a little bit we'll get it you know we'll get it okay let's see where we are here There's some really bright lights up there we'll, we'll get to yet. Inside the shoe, we're getting some reflections too. I 
Let's go ahead and uh, before we get, you know, the final thing should be your highlights, really. So let's go ahead and uh, block in the background, I think. This dark here I'm looking at again first on that heel. And I can see a little bit of it over there. Okay. So let's mix up, you know, all these background colors are different which we talked about, and some people said they liked it, and I'm kind of liking it. So I think we're just going to, you know, we're going to uh, do a gray. So we'll make, we'll, we'll use all three primaries. Red, yellow, and blue. Just trying to come up with a gray. You know, some of those lean are warmer, some are lighter. Cleaning off my brush for the second time. I don't clean it a lot and I don't clean it very well. I mean, I don't mind my colors intermixing. So we're going to, um, let's see, before we get going here, let's put that shadow in. paint the background in, I always say this, but it gives you a chance to work on your shapes. And I don't want to cover up all my tone. I can see that that's a little thick, so we'll work on that. mixing up more background color so you can bet it'll be different but that's okay. Yeah we gotta work on the shape of that dark inside of that shoe too. push it around so it doesn't you know feel isolated over here that color I just mixed. 
and that runs over kind of up at an angle like that. All right, we're looking at this shape down here of the this dark. Again, it felt a little um, thick to me. Right, let's see what the shape needs. Like I say, even though, um, you know, we started with the darks that we saw, you know, when you get to the end, you go back where you need to and uh, put in any darks you need to or lights that you need to. Let's look at some of these highlights that we see. Some of them are very light, so I'm going to try pure white on some of them, like along the edge here. It's really sparkling because they're shiny. And it runs across the toe. bit of a sparkle there. see me finger fix too much. I don't get my fingers in there too much. I try not to. I mean, I did mention a while back I do plan on eventually get moving away from the CADs altogether, finding something different for my CAD red light and my CAD yellow medium because those colors are toxic. That's why you don't want to be rubbing your finger in them all the time. And it's a good idea to wear a glove. It really is. Some artists wear a glove and of course they, a lot of them use solvent too, which I do not. And as they clean their brush, they've got a rag to wipe it into. I did get away from that with the water mixable oils. I don't have any solvent, so. And I did that for health reasons too, just to work healthier. See, when you think back maybe to where, <clears throat> to maybe how this color looked to you when we started against the orange canvas and when that was the only thing on there, I don't know how it felt to you, but it may not have felt like it does now. I mean, it does change things. So let's, um, clean up 
clean that up a little bit. I think they're fun. Trying to make sure my drawing's correct and everything feels right. I've got a bright reflection there, but I don't know that it really helps. Cut into that heel a little bit. Actually, what I'm seeing in this shoe is a tag. These are Vera Wang. Did I mention that? And this is just a reflection. That's pretty much everything I see. How do they look through there? Let's see. Right. I think we'll lay them down with the other pair. <clears throat> other pairs. And uh, we can get an idea of what they'll all look like together. Oh, they're really shiny. Hopefully you don't get so much reflection that you can't tell <clears throat> depending on where I'm standing they're really shiny and now I have to think about placement these are blue and these are blue I've got lighter backgrounds here and here this is warmer this is more of a grade so now I have to play with them and position them and none of them are I think yeah this pair is signed right there tiny i want the signature small so they don't distract so yeah i i think i am going to leave the backgrounds different um you know as i'm looking at them here i may lighten up that background i'm not sure so i'll go to playing with them i'm going to look at each one individually too and see if i think i need to do any tweaking and they're not placed in that frame you know, those red shoes are probably further to the left than they will be. So, but this gives you an idea. I had fun doing it. I just love shoes. So I hope you enjoyed watching. You got to see a couple of them, didn't you? Yeah. So I'll take you back up to the, the pair we painted. And uh, there they are. And again, don't forget to sign up uh, to get in for our giveaway. I'm thinking Friday I'll draw a name and uh, give people a little more time to enter. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Welcome new subscribers. We're growing and I love it and I love doing this and I hope you enjoy it. And join me next time. Stay well.